Welcome to Journey Church. Our church exists to help people find God, experience freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. If you have any questions about Journey Church, please visit us at OurJourney.tv. Now, here is Pastor Vince Farrell. You are in here this morning because it's Family Sunday. In the back of the room where it says gather, the announcement may have told you that there are some pieces of paper for taking notes. You want to take notes this morning because at the end of service, show us your notes, don't give them to us, but show us your notes at the Welcome Center. Our online campus pastors, John and Crystal, have some goodies for you for taking notes. How many know it's a good thing to take notes, amen? Amen. So be sure to slip out through the sides and grab you some of those notes because we are going to begin. And I think if um, you are ready, I'm ready. If, if you're ready, I'm ready. All right, all right, all right. Well, I do want to say uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we began this series called The Four Cups six weeks ago. Four Cups, six weeks. We laid a foundation the first two weeks talking about how these promises of God that He gave to the nation of Israel are still promises for us today. And we began six weeks ago, and let me just say, we're going to end the same way we began, which is with communion. We took communion the very first week of uh, the series, which happened to be the end of the month. And, and so if you're just new here and you're kind of wondering about Journey Church, every last Sunday of each month, we take a moment to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. And so tonight, today's a very special day. We're going to take communion together. And let me just say that as a person who's here, you do not have to be a member or a, a, a person who claims Journey Church as their church to take communion. You just need to be a partner of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what Scripture says. So if you've given Jesus Christ... Your Lord, uh, he's Lord of your life, you've given him your life, then we invite you to take communion with us. Now, I want to say this, that if you've missed, on, uh, missed any of this series, that every single Monday, we put it up on our website. And I would encourage you to look up the four cups on our website. It's, it's called uh, ourjourney.tv. Okay, super simple to find. Ourjourney.tv. Uh, go to our website and you're going to find all the messages online. Now, the single most important point I've been trying to drive home these last six weeks is the promises of old that God made yesterday are still promises for us today because Jesus Christ fulfilled those promises. So these promises that Jesus fulfilled are for us right now. These four promises, or four cups, if you will, is the cup of salvation, the cup of freedom, the cup of restoration, and today we're going to talk about the cup of fulfillment. I think we'd all agree that we all desire joy. Can I get a show of hands? You want joy in your life, but not just surface joy, right? Joy that comes from drinking from the fourth cup. This type of joy is a life of joy because we are living in the promises of God and serving others. That, that, that's the whole cup this morning. In fact, if I could say it this way, true joy is found in knowing God living in freedom, practicing our purpose, and making a difference in our world. Amen. There it is. That is the key elements. And here's the bad news. You can't buy this on a shelf. True joy, joy that we all want to obtain, can't be bought. But it can be practiced and lived out. Now let's look at our scripture memory verse, if you will, what we've been kind of looking over these last six weeks. It comes from Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. And again, this is the Old Testament. 
which means God made some promises way before Jesus came to the cross, but they could only be fulfilled because of Jesus. He says these four promises, and the reason why we call them the four cups is because the Jewish people would take communion, or, or what we call communion, but they would celebrate it by what's called the Passover Supper. And they would actually drink from four separate cups, and each cup represented this promise that God gave them in Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. He says, I will free you from being a slave to them. I will free you. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people. Now, that's interesting about this is the first two are singular. I will free you. I will draw you out of Egypt. For us here this morning, I will free you. I will take you out of this world system. I will save you. Jesus will draw you near to him. And then the second one, I will redeem you. Now I got to get Egypt out of you. Now I got to get the world system out of you. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago. I highly recommend going online and listening. And then he says, I will take you as my own people. Now it goes to plural. And I will be your God. We're going to talk about this morning, what we're calling the cup of praise. And let me begin with this statement that many of us in this room are spending countless time, resources, and energy trying to obtain a fulfilled life. But God's ultimate plan for you and me is a life fulfilled without having to toil about it. A life full. This is what Jesus came to do. He said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give life to the fullness. And I think it's sad to say, and I've mentioned this stat every week, that 87% of people who sit in the American church never get to fullness of life. They would say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, God has is, is, is saved me. But, man, I'm still struggling with some issues. And they get stuck on cup number three. I'm still trying to get over some of these things that have got me in bondage. I'm still trying to be delivered. So the question becomes, why do so many people struggle with this fourth cup? I think that's a valid question. Let me give you three quick reasons why we struggle and stay stuck in cup three instead of moving to cup four. The first thing is, we let our past cripple us. It's not on your notes, but Psalms 38 verses four and six says, my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. How many of you ever felt that way before? You know, you've done stuff you're not supposed to, and you're like, oh man, God, help me. I am bowed down and brought low. Well, I can relate with that. And the point with this is, I made this a couple weeks ago, you'll never see your future until you get over your past. I got news for you here this morning. If you are letting what you've done in the past or what's happened to you in the past cripple you, you're going to struggle with having future of who God has for you and called you to be tomorrow. The second, second thing we do is we not only let our past cripple us, but we let our culture define us. It's been well said of the church in America, we are a mile wide and an inch deep. We have no spiritual depth to our faith. We're like the seed that fell on shallow ground, springs up when we get an emotional high or God shows up and we're excited and then it quickly dissipates because there's no foundation because our foundation is built on what culture defines us as. We've never discovered God's plan and design if we let a counterfeit culture put identity on us. 
Truth of the matter is, we care more about what people think than what God thinks. Amen or oh me, I'll take either one. Galatians chapter 1 and 10. I am now trying to win the approval of men or God. Which am I trying to win? Am I trying to win the approval of men or God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. In other words, it's one or the other. The third thing that keeps us from stepping into this and drinking from this fourth cup is we try to do it all alone. True fulfillment never comes alone. God never intended for you to be an island. True fulfillment can only be attained in a group. Over and over again you see in Scripture the terms used for the church is always in the context of a group. We are the family of God. We're part of a fellowship of believers. Some of you are thinking ring. See where my Lord of the Rings fans are? Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. I appreciate that. But, but we're a fellowship of believers. We're, we're, we're the body of Christ with many parts. We're part of the flock of God. Are y'all following me with this? Ecclesiastes 4.8 says, There was a man all alone, and he had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil, trying to achieve fulfillment. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. Boy, this is chock full of the single principle that you and I, when we try to do life alone. Well, you don't understand, Pastor Vince. I'm, I'm a recluse. I get that. Well, become a butterfly. Wait, not that type of recluse. Okay. We, we can't allow personality bents or the way we're structured in our thinking to define us. That's, that's culture. We have to allow God's word to define us. And the reason why this man was not content or fulfilled with all that he had, because he was alone. The Hebrew word, hala, means to celebrate. It's where we get our English word, hallelujah. And this word means far more than just what we did this morning concerning raise a hallelujah. I'm going to get my praise on. Okay, it, it goes far above that because we tend to limit praise or celebrate just as the first couple of songs we do on Sunday morning. But this word means far greater than just praise and worship. To celebrate. In fact, if you look at the word hallelujah, the middle part is God. Hala, celebrate, to celebrate God. When we say hallelujah, we're saying we celebrate what God has done in my life. But hala, hallelujah, means to live life to the fullest, to live large. It's the feeling inside of you that breeds true, watch this, contentment. See, I think we all can quote, or at least we know the verse, and, but we might not know the address to it, but Philippians 4.13, do you know Philippians 4.13? I'll get you started. For I can do all... Yeah, so we, so we recognize it. And when we get in a, a situation that we know we're supposed to celebrate, but we don't feel like it because there's not true joy in us, then we start quoting it. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. That's great, Philippians 4.13, but I would encourage you to read verses 11 and 12. <laughs> because the Apostle Paul wrote this and he said, I have learned in all things. How many things? I have learned in all things, whether I have a lot or whether I have a little, whether I'm being stretched out or whether I'm being shrunk down. 
I have learned the secret to being content. That was verse 12. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. See, real joy does not come from making lots of money, having a lot of pleasure. Real joy does not come from things. Real joy comes from knowing my purpose in life and making a dis- difference for eternity. Amen. Ultimate fulfillment comes when you're part of a family making a difference because God is on your side. This is the secret to cup number four. And that's what we find in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. I want to take you back there to the scripture verse. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Real quick this morning, I want to give you three simple points how you and I can start drinking from cup number four. Are you ready? How do we move from not being alone to this belief that God is on my side and I can't fail at making a difference? I can't fail. You can't fail. And when I practiced that, in my mind, everyone was just going crazy ballistic in agreement with me. <clears throat> you can't fail. When you have true joy, when you drink from the cup of praise. Pastor Chris Hodge, who gave me the thoughts for this message, he said, you know, after the fourth cup, what are you supposed to name the fourth cup? I mean, praise, of course. You've already had three cups of wine, so why not? The fourth one is woo, you know. (laughs) I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it makes a good point. So here, here's, what key, here's what we do. Here's how we drink from the fourth cup. To live a life of praise beyond Sunday morning. It could be very well in the American church. The reason why we stand there like lumps on a log is because we haven't lived Monday through Saturday with hallelujah in our heart. has nothing to do with, I don't know that song. Appreciate so much Pastor Will letting me know that my microphone was on during praise and worship. Because even when the screens are not filled with words, there should be a song coming out of your heart. Doesn't matter what's on the screen, it matters what's in your heart, amen? So here, here's, the, here's the first one. It begins with a calling. If you're in this room and you have given Jesus Christ your life, you've drank from the first cup, and you're in the process, drinking from cup number two, him taking the world out of you, the fourth cup, you've been called. 2 Timothy 1.19, I like the way this reads in the Message Bible. It says, God saved us and called us. That's plural. That's us in this room. To his holy work. We had nothing to do with it. It was his idea. A gift prepared for us in Jesus long before we knew anything about it. I said this last week with cup number three. I'll say it again. God has a destiny and purpose for you. You did not catch him off guard by being born and him go, oh, I got another one. Uh, have them. Let's see. What, let's find something to do for this one. Uh, yeah, let's have them do this. I'm calling them to do that. No, no, no. He had a calling already for you, and now he's waiting for you to be born. And the moment you're born, he goes, here you go. Now run with it. You're going to find fulfillment in that. Amen. You've got to know the why. Because if you don't know the why, then you'll lose your way. 
I've said for many years, you've got to have clear vision for what God's called you to, because if you don't have clear vision, then you will fall in love with anything. I have the privilege to get to talk to our teenagers on Wednesday night while Dr. Dale Yurton teaches our adults on Wednesday night. And, and, and they're here in this room, and those of you watching online, let me just help you. Ladies, you want to have a clear vision. Single ladies, where's all my single ladies? All right. Let me just help you. This is free. This isn't even my notes. This is just free stuff. Here it is. Ladies, you want to have a clear vision of who you want to date and marry? Because if you don't, you'll follow and fall in love with Mr. Wrong at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> clear vision keeps you out of the ditch. Now, listen, it's the calling he called us. It's the calling that inspires us. It is, the, it is critical to, to realign yourself with the calling. And, and let me just give you what the calling is. Because if you're here and you're like, okay, I'm called, what am I? Inside your spirit, there is a voice projecting, but it gets muffled in culture and busyness and toil and looking for peace and not having it. But it, if you'll listen, this is what it's yelling. It's saying, I want to make a difference. Say that with me. I want to make a difference. You do, don't you? All of us, at the core of our being, we want to make a difference. The most fulfilled people are the people who are filling up someone else's cup problem is we, we don't know how or what or when or why. We just know there's something in us that I, I want to be used for God doing something. And some of us are frustrated because we pray every night, God, if you'll just tell me what to do, I'll do it. God, if you'll just show me, I'll do it. What is it? Because I want to make a difference. Well, here's point number two. The cup stands on a cause. See, cup four isn't about climbing mountains or, or, or writing bestsellers or job promotions and, and doing the things you like to do. I mean, that's, that's fulfillment. If you're a mountain climber, you love to climb mountains, that's awesome, but that's not what cup four is about. It's about doing something that makes an eternal difference. Using what God gifted you, and that's what we talked about cup three. Watch it online, ourjourney.tv. Making a difference must be centered on a cause. And our cause is to serve the one who saved us because it is focused on what he focuses on. That, that's what I love about this church. If you're here this morning and you're looking for a different kind of radical church, then search no longer. Journey Church, you'll feel right at home being different and weird and happy. <laughs> Because, man, I'm telling you, when, when God dropped in my spirit, I want you to do something that no one else is doing. Because we have this, this belief system. In order to reach people that no one else is reaching, we have to do things what no one else is doing. And I started thinking, well, God, what is that? And he dropped in my spirit free photos with Santa Claus. And I was like, oh, no, Lord, take this cup from me. I can't do Santa in church. Oh, no! At least that's how I prayed. And all of a sudden, we look at Scripture and we look at how God is in the people business, that God sent His Son into a place that was ungodly. And so we are going to ask people in this community, we're going to invite them, we're going to send videos, we're going to do anything we can for people who want to rally behind something that, you know what, that's, that, that's their business. But we're going to be Jesus. And we're going to love people. And we're going to serve them. 
And we're going to do whatever we can to break down whatever barrier they have in their mind about the church. I think that's a good thing, amen? That's a good cause. Because that's what Jesus is in the business of doing. Acts 20, 24 says, But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it to finish the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Amen? Amen. Let Let me break it down for you real simple. Our cause is to serve the one who saved us. Our cause is to be focused on what he's focused on. That's the cause. I want to make a difference. Okay? So let's look at what God is doing and link arms with it and go that direction. The call is, I want to make a difference. The cause is, I want to do something that makes a difference. Do you see that? Here's the third one. Because, let me me just say this, the happiest people... Again, our people making a difference in the lives of others. That's because that's how God made you. Listen, watch this. God is a giver, not a taker. Too too many people, I mean, you you turn on any show on Netflix, you turn on anything that that has an anti-God theme to it, and it's constantly, God God is terrible, God is bad, He he gave us cancer, He gave, it's, no, no, no. God is a giver of life. And you and I were made in his image. So if God is a giver, guess what we're to be? Givers. There needs to be no, look, there needs to be no room for selfishness in a Christian's life. Number three, it moves from me to we. I showed you on screen our church's website address, and I did that on purpose because I've been leading up to this process. When we were praying about what to give our Journey Church web address name, we wanted something that wasn't possessive. So when we say ourjourney.tv, we're not saying it possessive as mine. We're saying it corporate as together. Our body of believers. Because, I mean, in the actual name, journey is... We are meant to do life together. And and let me just say this, because I know with some of us in here, you hear from churches, get in a small group, get in a small group, get in a small group. Small group is just the starting point of doing life together, not the end result. So we we praise God that you're here this morning. We praise God you're watching online. But listen, those of you watching online, we want to move you into the body of Christ, this local house called Journey Church or some other church if you feel compelled to. We want to get you plugged in a body. And then from this, we want to get you in small groups. And it's from small groups we just start launching. In fact, I think this is probably a a great opportunity to just kind of plug this. Um, October 27th, all of our section hosts and all of our ushers, we're going to have a meeting on October 27th that we want you to be a part of. I'm going to be casting vision about some of the things we're moving as a church. And let me just open up the doors right now. If you're here this morning, you're saying, you know what, I want to make a difference. I don't know exactly my gifting. That's okay. That's what we're here for, to help you find. We're we're excited to help people find their gifting. But I would encourage you, if you want to operate here at this local body, serving people, helping people, making a difference, you say, I want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference with people who are making a difference, be here October 27th. All right? John chapter 15, 8, and 11. Look at this verse. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. What is fruit? Making a difference. 
showing yourselves to be my disciples. Family of God, togetherness, not alone. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that you have joy that becomes, that you have fulfillment. We're going to end just like we began serving communion. And we share in communion every last Sunday, like I mentioned. <clears throat> and what you're going to see is you're going to see some ushers in the middle and at the sides. And we're going to all funnel through row by row. Our ushers will help us row by row to the middle, and you'll be instructed to come to a table. While you're sitting, waiting to come, there will be some instructions on the screen. And I want to show you this real quick. <clears throat> because in Scripture, Matthew 26, 26 to 29, and this is also recorded in Luke. He gives a little bit more detail. <clears throat> While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body. Now here's the, here's the breakdown, what's happening. <clears throat> they had already had cup number one, because you have cup number one, and then the eating of bread. Then you have cup number two, and you eat your main meal. This is where praying after the meal. And then cup three, they would bless cup three and preach a blessing. They would typically quote a psalm, Psalms 113 through 118, uh, and then they would sing. And then they would have cup number four with joy. Now, the reason why I want to show you this is because it says while they were eating, which means they had already done cup number two, because you have cup number three after the meal. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and broke it, <clears throat> saying, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. So this is cup number three. Are you tracking with me so far? <clears throat> now, he stops at cup number four. He says, I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, now these disciples, because Passover had been taken the same way for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So they know cup four is next. And Jesus says, no, I, I'm not going to drink cup number four with you. He ends... Passover with them and does not drink from cup number four because Jesus himself will drink the final cup with you and me on that day we meet him in heaven. You talk about joyful celebration. Thank you for being with us online. Our desire is to journey with you however you want to connect with us. We look forward to doing life with you. Now, let's go this week and be the church in our community as we focus on loving God and loving others. For more information about our church, visit us at ourjourney.tv. See you next week.